mind all this wasted time. You won't be wasting mine and need it. Say you didn't need her. All this wasted time. You won't be wasting mine all this wasted time. So Bertie Scott, the way you love me. You know what? I enjoy the tune. Like I, I like the vocals. Uh, a little bit uh, more, say, mellow than I'm used to, but still, it was a good tune. I liked it. I think um, for me, what I like, what I think is, I, I love the fact that he's contacted. You know, he, he's got the guts to contact me and just say. Um, I don't know if he knew that I did radio and stuff. He was doing it sort of based on the blog and, and almost sort of saying, can you help with promotion? Right. Um, but from my point of view, I think when someone's out there doing it and like he's producing it himself, he's, he's, he hasn't got management, he hasn't got um, anybody promoting and he's, he's, he's doing it, you know, he's out there doing everything. He does all the vocals, piano, plays the instruments. I think it's great, and I think you know if we our role, I suppose, is kind of DJs or on any kind of medium, it's to give people a break isn't it? and yeah. support them. And I think you know the production of that, I, I was impressed with, and you know I, I just think it's I, I can hear it. I for me, I could hear it, and I, I know I've said this before, but um, in like a one of those teenage kind of rom com, you know, you, you can hear that kind of track. Right, on, right. A, on a film or some kind of drama on TV or something like that. But I really, yeah, I thought it was really good. Yeah, it would, it would definitely be, I <clears throat> I would, I could, I could see it in a, in a chick flick for sure. Oh, and he's got a very hot look for, for girls. I can imagine they'll be sort of drooling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, th thanks for throwing that in there, but yeah. Yes. <laughs> say, say no more. <laughs> say no more. <laughs> Anyway, I've got... Does she a goer? Does she go? <laughs> I've got another bit of trivia for you. All right. Um, you probably already know this, but Paul Simon doesn't like Art Garfunkel. <laughs> yeah, I go figure that one. <laughs> well, apparently Garfunkel um, has called him an idiot and a jerk. And I think for... Um, uh, Simon was interviewed and he basically said, I think I think they were asking if they'd ever kind of played together again and right. it was Rolling Stone magazine he said, we don't even talk um, so there'll be no chance for us playing together again. So, And he said most people come to his gigs because they want to hear, you can call me out. I don't know if that's true really, but uh, I do like the video. With Chevy yeah, Jones. I mean, it's not a bad song. That was on, that was on his uh, Graceland CD, but yeah. Um, that was a, I was actually a very experimental one because uh, I experimented with uh, music from like uh, like uh, South Africa and stuff like that. Yeah. So I mean, I, I mean, it's it's a good tune. I wouldn't say it's my favorite on the album. I mean, but no. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't go to a Paul Simon show just specifically for that no. one song though. No, me neither. Um, oh, and the other thing, you, and again, and again, you know, I think we talked before about. Brian Johnson of ACDC uh, being told by doctors that he's going to lose his hearing if he doesn't, you know, quit the tour right. and take a break. Well, apparently Axl Rose is stepping in. I don't know if you knew that. What? Yeah. 
love it. I love your reaction. <laughs> yeah, I did, did think you'd look like that. Oh, well, man, I am glad I saw them before that. Pardon me, before that uh, a whole step in there. I, I can't stand Max Rose. I really can't. He he is one of the biggest douches out there. That's why I can't believe. That. Wow. Yeah. Well, there you go. And Alice, as I say, Alice Keeper thought it was a joke, and then he's he's been said to sort sort of go, oh, it might work. <laughs> yeah, he's just being polite. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. But yeah, so there you go. And I I don't know if it means that Brian Johnson's got to give up completely. I don't know if it's just for this tour, which it could be, but. I don't know. Oh. Yeah, so there you go. Weren't they? Were, weren't? Wasn't GNR doing a reunion tour at Coachella and stuff like that? Weren't they booked for a lot of shows? Yeah. Well, I don't know, but you know, it's, <coughs> yeah, you're not impressed at all, are you? Now? No. I mean, don't <laughs> don't get me wrong. If I got the opportunity to see a GNR, this is Guns N' Roses, I, I, I the, the old the old lineup, I yeah. would I would try to go and see it. Right. Because because as much as I can't stand Axl Rose, I mean, I did like the the the, the first yeah. GNR album. But putting him in place of Brian Johnson for ACDC is like, I don't know. It's almost a slap in the face of Brian Johnson, I think. Like, it, Well, it's just, yeah, it, it shocked me, I have to say. I, I was really surprised. So, but hey, don't know. There we go. Well, it could be worse. They could ask someone like Fred Durst to do it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, Well, I think we should go to another <laughs> <laughs> you can have a lie down. No, <laughs> get <bad>. upset. <laughs> <laughs> uh, should we go to this modern hate? We sure can. Do you want to keep this one up too? Uh, no, you can keep it up. It's fine. Right. Well, oh, well, you, you know more about the song than I do. That's why I said you want to keep it up. Uh, right. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> it's it's basically their new track, and Rob Payne from the Mighty Bedroom Hour, um, when they split up for. You know, sort of their different reasons, which was really shocking, wasn't it? Was it last year? It was last year. Yeah, because it was like a couple of months after Hinterland came out. Yeah, I mean, and they they had such a massive following. They were absolutely huge on social media, weren't they? I mean, they really, you know, sort of had a presence. And I, I mean, I did a review of their album, and so when they announced that, I was completely well bowled over. I just thought, what's happened? You know, it really was a shock. So. So this is kind of um, the offshoot from that, which is obviously, it's always really difficult, isn't it? If you've been in a massive, you know, band that's, that's got such a huge following. Oh, yeah. Uh, to then obviously start again is, is quite difficult. But this this track, again, was kind of um, sent, to, or, I, or I was, you know, asked about it, see what I thought about it. And I was really impressed. So I really, you know, well, we'll get to it. And then you, everyone can sort of make their mind up, really. But we can talk about it after. But it's ship on the ocean. Man, here we go with the modern hope.
This Modern Hope with Ship on the Ocean. You know what? I really like this. It just it was a really good like pop tunes had a good like mellow flow to it and and it just it's it just like it's a good it was just like a sort of a simple idea to sing about right I mean like ship yeah. on the ocean it's like oh it's like and but yeah it was a really good tune I really enjoyed it. I think I think that's the beauty of it. It's well produced, and you can tell the kind of um, I suppose talent behind it, um, and it's very confident. And I love the kind of atmospheric beginning. The haunting and his vocals um, are really strong and dynamic um, and for me it's really catchy like you say it, it kind of you know you, you could easily hear it again and go oh, yeah and so again it's got that commercial you know vibe to it which is brilliant I know I know bands probably hate being called commercial but you know at the end of the day it's what it's about isn't it let's face it it's getting the music out there and if you can if it's radio worthy which you know both the bands no one's son and this you can hear, you can, and Bertie Scott, you know, you can kind of think to yourself, well, is this worth getting it out there and giving it airplay, to be right. honest? So, anyway, I've got a bit of trivia, I must get this in. Right. Um, ironically, talking about Star Wars and having no one son music, they sent me a bit of trivia, and apparently, um, Wind Cries Mary bassist, because you know Jamie's involved yes. with that, yeah, the uh, Wind Cries Mary, the bassist Tim, 